Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Liam, and you might be wondering why I haven't been posting a lot of videos. Well, to you tens of people that have seen my videos, the reason being is because, one, I've had a really busy schedule, and something happened uh, over the last little bit. I've had to prioritize a little bit. I've had to get my head around doing this again, because when I started doing this, I, I wanted to make a promise to myself that when I started making videos, I would be as objective as possible and that I would do two different things. I would give an objective look at the film and I would give a personal look because I think those two elements are very important when it comes to film criticism. Unfortunately, with a film that recently came out uh, last year, I was very non-objective with it and I was very personal with it and it really clouded my judgment of the film completely and I realized uh, I need to first take the time to find out <laughs> a little bit more about myself and be a little bit more objective. So I'm taking a little bit of a break. Uh, hopefully I will be back here soon to talk more objectively about film and about um, film themes, characters, all that stuff without putting personal feelings behind it. Um, so I will not be here. Um, if you're wondering what film it was, it was Suicide Squad. It, it's a film, my review will still be up for it with my brother because it was the first one I did. I want to thank him very uh, quickly for taking part in that, but after a while, my opinion has dramatically changed about that film, especially as a film. It's it's not very good. But that being said, you guys do deserve to hear uh, somebody talk about this. I mean, to you people that have subscribed to my channel, uh, I thank you guys very much, and I want to give you guys... Um, uh, still an opinion on it. And thankfully, I have met someone who actually shares a very close opinion to mine. This person, believe it or not, actually has a lot of the same thoughts on films. He likes the same ideas that, uh, or the likes the same things in films that I like. He, he dislikes some of the same things. We share a very similar opinion, and after meeting this man, I believed we could actually work together on this. And he said, eh, so I believed that he mean, meant yes. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be getting away from the camera and he's actually going to take over uh, the reviews until I can prioritize a little bit and, you know, get better at this. So, thank you all so much for watching my earlier videos. They are still going to be up here. Uh, as always, ladies and gentlemen, take care and please give a warm welcome to Mr. Basil Sawyer. Hello, my name is Basil Sawyer. No doubt that Liam has given me a glowing review. Well, whatever he said, it is all true. Every word of it, including me talking to you about Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> the 1991 version, of course. Now I have to discern that because of this live-action film that is coming out recently. I hope soon I have a chance to see it. And if it's anything like the original, then I will be positively smashed by it. <laughs> yes. Hmm. This is fantastic. As is Beauty and the Beast. You see, the thing about Beauty and the Beast is... Oh, of course, I should say this before. I'm going to be talking a little bit deeply about Beauty and, the Beast, Beauty and the Beast and a few things that I absolutely love about it. So I guess I have to lay out a big spoiler warning, I understand. <laughs> However, the film has been out for a few decades, so why haven't you seen it yet? What? Is everything that's happening on the internet so much more interesting? More interesting than Beauty and the Beast? A tale as old as time? <laughs> oh, you make me laugh, children. You make me laugh. <laughs> yes. Now, the thing that I love about Beauty and the Beast, aside from its characters, which are, <clears throat> as I must say, fantastic in every way. Belle, her name means beauty, and she is beautiful, but not just physically. She is beautiful in every other sense of the word, in, in the mind, in the spirit, in the will. And that is one thing I love about her. Her will. She is fantastic in contrast to the Beast, who is a man who is so vicious and brutal. He is a man of such cruelty, but there is a man behind there still. But it is a man that has not had a chance to speak out with the human race. He has been confined 
confined to his vicious and harsh-looking shell. It's a tragic story, of course, but probably the character that I love the most is that of Gaston, the character that is so vicious and vile that it seeps through his da dashing good looks. <laughs> yes, dashing good looks. But it's very interesting to see how even a character that looks and seems as if he would be the hero in any other story is absolutely the exact opposite. But Gaston would not be the hero in any other Disney story. He would be just the utmost villain in any story. Because it's not how he looks that is so interesting, but it's how he reacts. His motivations throughout the film are simple. He wants to go after Belle. And when he goes after Belle, he simply... Well, he simply brags about how great he is. There's nothing about her that he cares about. It is all about him. His life. His future. Not her own. Not her own, of course. He doesn't care about her. He doesn't care about anyone but himself. Even his pathetic character, LeFou, who I believe is... Well, let's just say it. I think even worse than Gaston. Because even though Gaston has a personality, LeFou has given up his entire identity. His entire identity. He has nothing to define himself. He has sacrificed every sense of humanity just to be a man who follows Gaston around. And he's abused physically all the time. And he is... Almost no recollection of this. He, he doesn't care what anyone says to him. He just follows Gaston blindly. Unlike Belle, who when she meets the beast, actually stands up to him. Not immediately, of course. It does take time. As would any situation when you meet a horrific-looking person. But one thing that I find very interesting is so many people believe that she is falling in love with her captor and that this is part of some mental, mental illness that she has, but I disagree. I disagree entirely. I think she actually has the opportunity to leave. She leaves the castle, and eventually he comes to save her when she's attacked by wolves. Which is another thing I love about this film. There is a genuine sense of terror throughout it. Terror with the wolves. Terror with Gaston. You fear for Belle's independence. You fear for the beast to not be who he once was. Even though we know that he was not a very good person. He was a brat at first. Like We all know this. But... We so desperately want him to be human again, because, well, we all want to be human. I mean, think if you were a beast. Would it be such an interesting experience for you? If you didn't have candles and clocks around, do you think you would go as mad and as angry? I know I would. But very quickly, I'd like to mention the candle... Uh, Lumiere! Ah, Lumiere, yes. And Cogsworth! Oh, and Mrs. Potts. Oh, they are smashing characters. They are all the crux of this film. They... The good crux, they, they, they hold it, they are the glue of this film. They hold it together, and they make it so lively and fun. It is, it is a child's film because of these characters. It's very dark, of course, with some of its darker themes, but it is a children's film. It is a film that anyone can watch. It is a perfect family picture. It is also a film with a lot of energy. And, let's face it, this is a musical. To anyone who says they don't like a musical, ask them, well, do you like Beauty and the Beast? And if they say yes, well, then say, well, then you like a musical. You like musicals. You love them. Because this is Beauty and the Beast. And it is a musical. The energy in the animation is fantastic as well. And I'd think that this film would suffer if it didn't have it. If it doesn't have that energy, that, that spirit, that liveliness in all of its characters, well, then the film falls flat. This musical is so full of life. You want these characters to be real. In fact, they may seem real at times, but unfortunately they are not, and it is a very sad feeling when you grasp this. One of the things that I love the most, though, is the animation. It's hand-drawn animation, and yet it feels more alive today than any CG film can ever feel like. A film recently, Inside Out, it's a film that is very much alive, is it not? But it, this film, Beauty and the Beast, has that same amount of liveliness, and it is hand-drawn. It's fascinating how that can work. And you can feel the brush strokes, and, and the pencil drawings, and the color choices. They all come to life. This film is absolutely, positively fantastic to look at. There is one use of CGI in this film. Maybe two. But that use, they don't feel uh, like... 
They don't stand out like a sore thumb. They blend in perfectly, and they... My heart races whenever I see that one scene, the ballroom scene, when they dance together, my heart leaps, and I say, oh, this is animation at its finest. What I love so much is that, yes, there are questions I have. It's like, why does Mrs. Potts put all of these children into a cupboard? And does that mean anything? Is she confining her children to a prison? Is, is Belle suffering from Stockholm Syndrome? Is, is Gaston abused as a child and that is why he is so evil and vicious? I ask these questions like any other human being would, but the thing is, is that with a film that would be less in quality as a film, I ask these questions out of, wait, that makes no sense, why, why are they like this? I ask those questions as a concern and as someone who is taken out of this this moment, but instead I ask these questions as, do I care? Do I honestly, really, truly care if, if these are crucial parts to the story? No. Of course I don't. Because at the end of the day, the playfulness, the liveliness of this film is what I came to see. It's that liveliness that makes me see it even to this day. I adore this film, and it's a film that I think will grow on for years to come. The animation, as I said, is beautiful. There's the scene of the beast's transformation, and it is awe-inspiring. My jaw dropped just like Lumiere's and Cogsworth's and Mrs. Potts. My jaw was like, my goodness. And my favorite scene of all time is seeing when Belle confronts the beast for the first time after he saves her life. That is one of my favorite film moments, because we see what this relationship is. We see it develop, and the music, oh, the music is beautiful. There is nothing more perfect to a film. It, it elevates it in a way that very few musical scores can with films. So many people overlook them, but they are such an important element. <laughs> what do I say? I'm backtracking now. I've, I've said what I wanted to say at the beginning of the video. I said, that this film is flawless. It, it is a masterpiece. It is a masterpiece of filmmaking. It, it, it truly does deserve to be looked at in a new lens. This live-action film, I, I embrace it. I can't wait to see it. Because if it's anything like this film, then I'm sure there will be <laughs> some perfect moments in it just as well. I think it could be just as perfect as this film if they focus on those things, the energy, the liveliness, the characters. But the characters, they don't cheat themselves either. They don't betray who they are. Gaston is always a narcissist, always thinking of himself. Even when he wants to hunt the beast, he is only thinking of his own ambition. And Belle, she is always curious, and she always wants to be out somewhere new. She, she wants to explore. And the beast? The beast desperately wants to be human. But he doesn't know how, and he shows that, and when he does, he, he's acting like a, like a child. It's, it's quite fascinating, I must say. Well, that is what I have to say about Beauty and the Beast. As a film, it is perfect in every way. Yes, of course, there are questions that we ask, but at the end of the day, I don't worry about these questions, because at the end of the day, the film got me invested so much that I... I didn't bother asking these questions. I simply wanted to see where the film was going. So as a film, it absolutely gets a 5 out of 5. Now personally, I'm not going to give you a score. I don't think that's important. But I will say how I think you should see this film. To anyone who is around there watching this, and who has the money in their pocket, because of course this is an expensive film to get, you should get it. You should own this movie. Own it for generations. Show your children, your grandchildren. And when you pass on, you have your children show their children. And those children show their children. It's a film that will last lifetimes. After all, it's a tale as old as time, and it lasted this long. It's truly a fantastic film to watch. Well, ladies and gentlemen, those are my thoughts on Beauty and the Beast. Thank you all so much for sitting with me. Now, I am off to China to see pandas eat bamboo sticks. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And... Farewell.